Hey y'all, I'm Jesse Peterson and I teach art journaling here at Let's Make Art. And today I have a fun project for you called One Word. So first, I'm gonna, let's see. We're gonna use our mixed media journal that we developed with Carpe Diem. It has really awesome thick pages in it. And we're gonna use two art recipe cards. One of them is a prompt card and one of them is a technique card. And if you're not familiar with this, we have a subscription box that provides all of these fun things to get you going. So the one word prompt for today is all about um, choosing a word that gets you excited for creating. You can try to use this word throughout your journal and like hide it in little spots or make it really prominent in others. It's up to you um, and it can be a lot of fun to just keep you excited about creating as a reminder in your journal. You're telling me I could use any word? Yeah, any word. Just you got a word? Want. Just dragon. <laughs> Dragon. I like that. Does that get doesn't. you excited about creating? It does. This is Michael. He's running our cameras here, and um, yeah. We're Hello, everyone. Um, the other recipe card we're going to use is this one. It's a technique card, and this one's all about making a wonky word. So it pairs well with this prompt, and that's what we're going to do today. Awesome. I'm going to tell you about the supplies we're going to use. So we're going to use this acrylic paint. This is why we wear aprons. I'm going to use some yellow, orange. I've always been curious. You can use acrylic like as you water it down, right? Like, yes. What's the difference water. then between acrylic and watercolor? Do you know? Is there any? Well, watercolor, that's a great question. Watercolor is a, a paint that has pigment in it in a way that like makes it transparent okay so you can use light to dark uh, in that situation and acrylic can layer on top of each other so you can go light to dark or dark to light like okay. sort of thing if you're watering the paint down things Perfect. like that those are good things to know and you don't have to have fancy supplies to do this along with me use what you got but these are what we're using today all right so we're going to use this yellow And it's a little, it's a little bit, takes a little bit more effort to get the paint brush clean with acrylic paint than it does watercolor. Okay. And pink. There we go. We're also going to use some Yes Paste and a Posca pen. And this Posca pen is a PC1MR, which is like, what, is, what does that mean even? And what it means, it has a um, really thin nib on the end, and it makes really fine details Sweet. easy to do. We're also going to use this Posca pen that has a bullet-shaped tip and it's a little more versatile it has a range i gotta tell you i stole a posca pen from you months ago a black one it was my oh. first posca pen you those used it are, on the guitar right those things are amazing they will write on lots of surfaces and we're also going to use this collage paper that i designed just for this theme spark we even have a little spark right here okay show them here oh up under the main can yeah beautiful Yay. lovely Spark. Just some fun, fun things mixed up. Okay, we'll move this out of the way. And we'll bring our journal in here. Well, actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this striped paper first. So just how this is here, that's what we're gonna try right now. So we're gonna start with some red paint stripes. And I'm going to use this flat wash brush because it's gonna keep the thickness of my stripes consistent. So that's Kind of a nice thing to it's use. It's important. Yeah. Stripe thickness consistency. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to do this little red stripe here. And if you want it to be pretty opaque, you use more paint. If you want it to be less opaque, you just use more water. In this case, we're going to go over this stripe with a Posca pen. So we want the paint to be opaque so that white's going to show up really nicely. I always mix up opaque. Like I always feel like I say the wrong thing. What do you say instead? No, I say opaque, but I never know if like, when it's opaque, is it clear or not? 
you know. Oh, yeah. I get opaque and transparent flipped. Yes. Okay, so opaque is... Milky. Yeah, like you can't see through it. Like an opaque cake. Yes. You can't see through a cake. Okay, so... I'm just trying. I like it. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to do pink and red stripes. So I'm going to leave a little room right here, and then I'm just going to do red again because I don't want to brush my brush back and forth between red and pink. That's so that's a trick that you can keep in mind. I'm going to need to dispense a little more paint for myself. This kind of looks like ketchup in these cute bottles. <laughs> Those are cute bottles. And um, in our subscription box, you could have gotten this kind of paint or this kind of paint. The quality is the same, similar colors, so we're all good. You could use any paint. Mm -hmm. I even saw some people using their paint to paint the canvas drawstring bags that our journal cards came in. I thought that was so creative. That is awesome. It's the fun thing about an art community is you never know what people are going to do, you know? Yeah. I, I'm constantly inspired by what people do. And I feel like really nobody truly creates anything original. We're just rearranging the variables. And the more things we learn and take in, the more things we have to draw from to mix up and make new things. That sounds kind of weird, but no. I think it, does that make sense? Yeah, you nailed it. I get it. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more red stripe here. And then I'm gonna wash my brush and we're gonna start using the pink. And you could wait for this completely dry or you could be embrace that some of the pink and the red might mix up. And that's all right. I'm already seeing that I didn't have put enough paint in my thing. So sometimes I start out with like a little bit of paint because I don't want my paint to dry when I'm working slowly. Um, so just, you'll get used to how much paint you're gonna need and how fast you work and then you won't waste paint. But the only waste of paint is paint that's still in the tube. That's what I think. That's deep. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch The Office? I do. I haven't seen all of them, so sometimes people make references that I don't know. But Michael says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yes. Wayne Gretzky. And then he also quotes Michael Scott. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On the bottom. I like it. Yeah, you miss 100% of the art that you don't attempt or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. Jesse. Michael. I'm going to give it to you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, see I'm just fitting this pink right in the middle here. And then if the pink bumps up into the red and gets a little smear, I think that's fine. You could get really technical and mask this off with tape if you wanted very precise stripes, but it's up to you. You can do it however you want. I kind of like the wonky look. Wonky just messy. I embrace the, embrace the messy. I'm all okay with things being whatever. Okay. I love that handmade feel. You know, like the taped off is, you know, it's nice, but this is so much nicer. Yeah. Well, I feel like you just got to do what feels right. Like I, sometimes I have like joy and being particular if I'm in a special mood where I just want to be in control of something that makes me feel good. Right. I get <laughs> and that. sometimes I like working a little looser, so it's just all about what you're what you're feeling. Um, but I like that you like the handmade. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry for a few minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, so now this is dry. I just used a heat gun. You can use a blow dryer or, or you could just be patient and wait. Whatever works for you. <laughs> we're gonna add some little details on top of the stripes that we've created. And you can just do another stripe like I'm going to do, or you can experiment with other marks. It's up to you. All right. So we'll just start here at the top. And I'm just going to... I'm not worried about this stripe being perfect because the stripes underneath there aren't perfect. It's all good. And if your hand wiggles, that's all right. Um, want it to be straighter, then you can kind of stabilize your hand under it, get straighter marks like that. 
This Posca pen is just fabulous. I've used other white pins on top of paint and sometimes it would just get hung up on the paint and not like, you know, like skip, like, or whatever. I don't find that these Posca pins don't really do that. And I really like it for detail and adding things in home here like this. And I really like just repetitive details in my art journal when I'm working on something like this. I find it really relaxing. And I'll take it with me when I'm um, doing other things. I've mentioned this before, art journaling is really great for when you're, I don't know, waiting at a doctor's office or in between things, picking up kids at school, waiting in the car. You can get a little art journaling in just for a few minutes here and there. And these kind of details are the perfect thing to just start and stop whenever you're working. So you almost got this filled with stripes here. start my S up here and then I'm going to come down around like this. Can you see that very well? It's uh, a pencil. A little bit, yeah. And my paint is still a little bit softer. And um, I think I want that to be thicker. And the nice thing about this is you can go back and erase whatever. Will erasing mess with your uh, paint at all? If it's dry, it it's won't. okay. Okay. If it's still wet, then it might smear things around. And I'm doing this P like this with no in between because I think that's fun. And I'm going to do the same thing with my A. But you can do whatever feels right for you, whatever works for your word. I kind of like these horizontal lines across my word. I think that's kind of fun. But you can try other, other directions of... It's not very slimming for the word, though. You know? <laughs> Yeah, well, Wait, that's no, okay. vertical lines are not slimming. I don't know. Maybe Horizontal I just avoid lines. lines. I avoid lines. Could make them feel wider, okay, right? Right. Okay, S-P-A-R-K. That's how you spell spark. Sometimes when you're doing all these things, you might, like, miss a letter or something. Making sure I got the right thing here. It's good practice for when you've been out of school for a long time. It's just <laughs> letter writing, you know? Yeah. Getting all the spellings right. And Nicole teaches hand lettering here with Let's Make Art, and she has some really good, like, techniques on how to do this. Um, so you can always go check out those to get better at writing letters. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to put this right under here. And that I'm is a rad this. mat. I love that. Oh, mat. it's it's been loved. Um, I'm using this X-Acto craft knife. What I love about it is it has additional storage of blades in here, which is lovely because you can carry them around and not worry about them sliding out of your box or whatever. Sweet. You always want to start with a new blade. So that's why I started on doing that. Um, a new newish blade, right? Like if you haven't used your blade a lot, no big deal. But I find that cutting precisely um, really requires a sharp blade. So, and these are easy to change out. You just saw me untwist that. I'm going to stick that blade in there and then I'm going to tighten it up, make sure it's nice and tight. I like to dispose of these after I've taped them up a little bit so that they don't get in a garbage bag where someone's taking the garbage back out. I don't know, just a good thing to know, think about what's happening with your exacto. I like to kind of turn my paper the way that it feels natural for me to cut. You could also do this with scissors. It's up to you. Is there a secret to not cutting yourself? Just be careful. <laughs> Um, I try to cut away from myself. Okay. So, like, don't put your other hand <laughs> where the blade could slip. I guess that's a good, that, these are good things to think about, Michael. I have cut myself an exacto before. I was at a graphic design competition. <laughs> Just speedy cutting? Yep. I was cutting with a ruler, I had my finger like this, cut right over that finger. I just kept going, though. They make little tiny rotary cutters. Have you ever tried one of those? 
No, like you mean what they use in like quilting, but like yeah, on paper? Yeah, but like the wheel is smaller than a dime. So it's for like very intricate turns like this. Really? Yeah. Well, That'd I want to cool. know about that. Yeah. Okay. So that S is... That's a great S. It's okay. You know, and we got more paper. So if you decide you didn't like how your S turned out, you could do another one. It's all good. I think I'm liking this P already. This is just like drawing with a knife. Danger drawing. <laughs> I really like paper cutting. I've done some intricate ones in the past. I know that we're using the cutout letters in the journal, but I'm kind of liking the negative space that you've cut out of the sheet too. I like that you said that because I think it could be fun to look at your scraps and see what else you can do, right? Yeah. If nothing else, you could use it as a stencil for spray paint. Yes! That was a great idea. So, beautiful. This one turned out different than these ones here, but that's okay. It's whatever, right? And, like he said, you can use that negative space. Here's the one I cut from this one. I also did hello. That could also just be something you put in your journal, right? It's like that. Super cool. Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna take my pencil and erase some of these lines really fast. This S actually looks pretty cool like that way. Do you like it that way better? Oh yeah, that's way better. So yeah, if you got a wonky S, you wanna turn it around. This is your art journal. You can do whatever you want. There's not really any rules. Be dangerous, spell it wrong. Live on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> We're just having fun. Just gonna trim that off. Teens. All right, I'm liking that, feeling good about that. So you could use this straight on your journal like this and journal around it, or you can make a background for it and keep going. Love that. Yay, a spark, spark a start, just start. Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside and we'll just make a quick background for our spark to live. So this is what I did. With this, we'll come up with something similar to this, see how it goes. That's one thing when you're art journaling. It doesn't always turn out the same, that's okay. We're just having fun. Okay, I'm gonna keep using this flat wash brush and I'm going to get a little orange here. I'm gonna water it down a little bit. Then it'll kind of feel more like watercolor, just put a little orange here. And I'm kind of loosely following this other one that I did but just see where this goes. I mean, that's the nice thing about art journaling is that they never turn out the same, so no one can ever judge your work. No one can ever compare theirs to yours because you're like, well, I meant to do it this way. Yeah, it just got to find your, I don't know, your flow, your whatever you're doing there, and just have fun with it. <laughs> One thing I've found is if I have my brush like this and I'm in here trying to do something really, like, specific, Sometimes my work doesn't feel as like loose and fun, so I will hold my brush a little bit further back, and that kind of keeps me kind of just, do you know what I'm saying? Loose. Like, yeah, like just. Organic. Yeah, organic. I yeah. like, you are good with huh? thinking of words. Oh my gosh, there's I, a thesaurus back here. I have a really hard time thinking <laughs> of words sometimes, especially when I'm like creating. And it's funny because art for me is a way to communicate things that I don't have words for. Um, sometimes I don't even know what I'm trying to communicate until I start taking, making something. And then it's like, oh yeah, I like that because of this. And I think that, you know, applies to how I'm feeling about whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think I want a little bit of, I'm gonna mix a little orange and a little pink. Because whenever you got two colors that are running in together, if you want to have like some fun transition, you can just mix a little of that color and then go straight into the next color like this. Ooh. Could be fun, right? Yeah, that's good. We'll do little 
more pink over here. So acrylic is great because you can get this dry brush sort of effect, you can get this watercolor effect, or you can just have straight up like thick paint. And it's all about how much water you use in order to get those kind of things going. It's pretty versatile. I need more paint. That color scheme just reminds me of a sunrise so much. Yeah, it does. It's very warm. Yeah. And I think lately with all the snow here in the Midwest, getting up in the morning, coming to work with the sun rising has been so cool because it's like this white palette with this like pastel color coming up in the morning. I mean, I'm still heavily depressed, but it's pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. I took it. It's so cold. <laughs> it's, it's very cold. <laughs> very cold. We just got back from a trip to Los Angeles and it was like 70 degrees. Oh. And I came back and it was two outside. Two. That's for real. He's not exaggerating it that. It was two. <laughs> two is the number of how <laughs> cold it was. All right. So, yeah, don't be precious about this. Just get some paint on there. And then you can kind of respond to that, whatever. That sounds complicated, but it's not. Okay. So, while this is drying, I'm going to start thinking about what collage paper I want to use. And I think this looks cool right here. So, I'm just going to cut that out. Kind of see the size of my journal. See, I'm just, sometimes I even just do a little crease. And I know that's going to be sort of the edge of my paper. Let's just do that. That's what we're going to do. I like that you said don't be precious about it or precious with it. That's a, it's a good life thing, you know? I mean, be precious with babies. Be precious with babies. Yes. But art journals, you know, make a mess. Yeah, have fun. Don't think too hard about it. It's all good. All right, so I'm just going to use that line that I made that crease, and then I'm going to know this is going to be where I'm going to cut it. And I don't know. Let's go about right here. That looks good to me. So that can be on there, like this. And we'll go back and round the corner if you want, whatever. So I feel, I feel good about that piece. Lovely. I'm really liking this little heart in here. So I'm gonna cut that real fast. Do these, these pages come in the box or are these just things that they print out or where are the pages from? These pages I designed, they're called collage, collage paper. Okay. And um, I just, like the supplies that you get in your subscription box, that is a really hard word to say, mm -hmm. to be sort of filled like, feels like it's curated. Sometimes when I have this whole art room of supplies, it actually slows me down. I mean, I limit my supplies and kind of group it in themes, then that really helps me to like keep moving instead of having to make a lot of decisions. So I'm hoping that that's what that, this, having this curated supplies will do for you, is just narrow down your decision making and help you get to making stuff, the fun part, faster. That's a good, that's what works for me. Okay, now, so I think I'm gonna have this one be right here and we'll do this one here. And you can totally have things go across two pages. Like don't let that crease in the middle of your book stop you from living on the edge, breaking the rules, whatever. It's all good. So I think we'll have that go right there. And yeah, that feels right. And then one more paper. Slide this over here. I think this is kind of a nice little spot here, so we'll do that. And you don't have to cut everything perfectly either. You can you might cut it or tear it so the edge is like a little softer. Sweet. That's fun. Like sometimes when I'm on the go and I'm art journaling, I don't bring my exacto, I'll just tear stuff. I just keep going. I'm not going to keep that, not having a knife or scissors with me, I'm not, that's not going to hold me back from making some. I'll figure, I'll figure it out. Well, you can find a way. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeling good about those. And as I said, you have little yes paste in your box, a um, little sample of it. And this is what it looks like when you buy a big thing of it. It's huge. It lasts your entire life. I've had this a really long time. Um, I use a palette knife. This is water soluble, the Yes Paste. What I love, I'm just going to sing the praises of Yes Paste whenever I have the chance because it's a very workable glue. So it takes a little while for it to dry, which is nice when you're doing collage like this. Oh, I got a little paint in the back of this, but it's fine. Um, it's great for doing stuff like this because you can reposition it after like a little bit of time. You can still move it around. 
so it's not quick drying. I have never touched Yes Paste. Is it like a tub of glue stick? Yeah, a little softer. That is such softer. a great way to describe it. It's very much like that. It's non-toxic, it's acid-free. I do not use this on top of my stuff, just to underneath it. And um, acid-free, like that, a lot of people say, well, it's not really acid-free or like all these things. It's really about the paper that you're using with it, whether it's going to like yellow over time. There's a lot of factors there. I just wanted to find a glue that would be beginner friendly, not too expensive and workable. And I think it's important that this kind of checks all those boxes. Um, if you're looking for something super archival, um, there's other things out there. But my sort of advice on this is, if you want this to be forever, take a photo of it. Um, I lost everything in Hurricane Katrina and I have pictures of some of my work and I'm grateful that I have that. But I think taking pictures is the best best way to make sure your work is gonna last forever. For me, art journaling is just fun, so I'm not trying to worry too much about that. I had a bullet journal, which I was very proud of, that I kept for nine months, and my four-year-old played with it and threw it in the washing machine, and I really? wasn't aware. Oh, no. And then I dumped the load of laundry and washed my bullet journal, and it is just gone. Oh, so sad. Did you take any photos of it at no, all? No, zero. So learn from my mistake and take pictures of Wait, your journal. Is this the one where you raided the restaurants? Because I have a picture of that. Do you? I do because yeah. I took. I thought that was so good. good. <laughs> Michael is like very much a data person, and I think he's so creative in the way that he um, records data in a creative kind of fun way. Like, and so he um, has been here in this area longer than me, but he still loves good food and I very, I very much trust his opinion. He has steered me in good places before. And so when I saw that in his bullet journal, I was like, can I please take a picture of that? That all stemmed from, I have a poor memory and I didn't want to go to a bad restaurant twice. No, nobody wants that. So I would just write them down when I liked them and when I didn't like them. And then it just turned into pages and pages of restaurant reviews. <laughs> yeah, well, that is not lost forever. I have the photo I'll share yeah. with you later. Well, that's nice, thank you. Yes, okay. So take pictures of your work. That's what we're saying, if you want to be able to. And I love when people take pictures of their art journal and share it with us so that we can see what you're making and we can be inspired by each other. It's all good, all good things. OK, so that's feeling good on that one. If you notice, I kind of just push that into the crease and then push these ones down. That kind of helps keep it where when you're opening and closing your book, it's all good. These are just layers. And you can just keep on working in these layers and having, having fun making stuff. If you don't have the amount of time to work on it all at once, you can do this in chunks of time, and that's also fine. I'm just gonna put that right there, smooth it out. Okay, this is starting to look like it's coming together here. And this glue can sometimes be sticky on your fingers, but it's water soluble, so get it wet, and it's not sticky anymore. So that's a trick. Well, let's see. I think I want some of these yellow dots at the top. Gotta do that real fast. Just, just a little bit. Can't have too many yellow dots. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little, maybe like three lines. So I'm just gonna cut this at the three line mark. Cause maybe I wanna use this little cool moth for something else. I'm just gonna steal a little bit of these dots from the moth. You can, you, he can have the rest of them. Or she, maybe that's a girl moth, I don't know. Do you know anything about those? Mm -hmm. What are the, is it like how birds are where they're more colorful, they're boys or something? Moths? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but who knows? I have no idea, so I went to art Dang, school. that's a great question. I don't know about, we should look it up. We should. I went to biology school. I have zero clue. I'll look it up. You, okay. you, uh, yes, paste things. I will look. Yes, I want to know that. All right, I'm just gonna put that right there because there's that little bit of yellow right there, so that'll transition right into that color nicely. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little paint to this. 
The nice thing about this collage paper is it's not, it doesn't have a glossy surface. So it will soak up some media kind of nicely. Now if you put a ton of stuff on it, it might ripple, you know, a little bit. So I'm just gonna water my brush, get my brush wet. I'm gonna water down my paint a good bit and just kind of tint this a little bit yellowish right in here. Just you can want less paint like that. See that? Just a little hint. That's really cool. All right, we got butterfly news. Okay. Butterfly? Or is it the same as moths? Butterfly and moth. This I think this? this website is saying that in general they're very moth. similar. They have like a little bit of uh, shape difference on their body. Oh. But their wings are usually about the same. Really? Yeah. So they have different behaviors, but it's probably hard to generalize all butterflies and moths into saying that. That makes sense. Okay. Well, I used more pink paint than I thought I would. I was the only daughter in my family and granddaughter in my family. And there was a lot of pink in my life at an early age. And I put my foot down <laughs> at some point and said, no more pink. I saw this fun thing about, like, when pink and blue became associated with boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was like during the rise of Mattel with Barbies. Yeah, I saw that too. It was like the story behind the toys like yeah. making um, show or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was so interesting. Because they would pull, like in the early 1900s, they pulled and said like, what color is pink associated with? Or like, what gender? And they're like, I don't know, just babies. Wow. All babies. Well, yeah, and I have a picture of my grandpa in a dress. Like, yeah. that wasn't like a thing either. Like, yeah, it was probably just easier to you know take care of them change Changes. yeah Papers are the worst. well they are also the best yes <laughs> great way of looking at it jesse <laughs> i mean i don't know the what i would do without them <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i have some friends who like do the cloth diaper thing and i mean i get it there's there are reasons for that but i kind of just like like the diapers i have one stone diapers at my house right now grateful for those things. All right, that's looking good. Gotta let this dry for a second. This is just, it's dry enough. We could, we could just keep going. All right. So when you approach a project like this, mm -hmm. are you just thinking like, okay, I like the word spark. And then when you're, you're choosing colors and things, are you just like going off of like a feeling inside of you? Or are you thinking a specific thing? How do you, how do you pick the page? It just goes, it just happens? Um. I like this question. Um, sometimes I'm thinking like literal like spark and fire and that feels good. Okay. But I think because I was drawn to the word spark, then all of those kind of things were probably related. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes I do. I, my color choices are very much like a mood, right? We decided we like that S upside down, more like yeah. that, right? Um, if it's not sticking and this is a little bit wet, you just might need to give it a more another minute to dry. But for today, right now, we're just gonna keep going. Um, yeah. So some one thing will inform another. So the spark kind of was like, okay, well, I want to have warm colors. Okay. My mic died, so I'm gonna yell. It's fine. I like it when you yell. Michael doesn't actually yell, just so you know. That was, I was just trying to be funny, and he's way better at being funny than me. Okay. It's my face. It aids to it. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I think I tried to be funny a lot, because I was like, if I just beat them to it, then they can't make fun of me or whatever. But now I'm like, I don't care what people think, so... I just like making art. It makes me happy. You're in the right place. You I can't, landed in the right place. I can't believe I get to do this. <laughs> so fun. So fun. It's so therapeutic just to make something. It feels good. Wow, I'm really making a mess of this. I don't even know if you could see that on camera because I was probably holding it too far away. There's a lot to think about when you're making something and talking about it. All right. So I kind of just put that S in that little circle because that kind of felt nice. 
And, you know, I didn't put it straight. I kind of just try to fill the space here. With a lot of glue on that. I'm just going to wipe that off and get my hands wet. Some, like, the fancy restaurants have finger bowls for that. So, you know, if we were a fancy artist, maybe we have some finger bowls to keep our hands clean. I don't know. We should make a million dollars and make a, like, it looks like a stamped ink pad full of glue. Oh, I wonder what that would do. What would that be like? Okay, we gotta let this dry for a second and then we'll do some finishing touches and we'll be all done. Okay, now that this is dry, and that's important so that you can do your next layer, we're gonna try doing a little, little writing with our Posca pen right here. And um, I'm just gonna put Spark a Start in just some messy handwriting here. And little notes to myself like, get going already because starting is the thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you want to do here. And, and if no one else can read it, that's fine, because this is your journal. It's like for you. And if you're writing it over this lighter paper, then you won't see it quite as much. But that's all right, too. Just have fun with it. This just adds some depth to your piece, and it's just, I don't know, I find it therapeutic to write some things like this everywhere. Might would just say like, I love chocolate. Oh, I could do that too. With a bunch of E's. Like that? Chocolate, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you can do a little bit of that with a pencil or to give it some other colors in there. You could use a pen, get some, I don't know, try some marks out. Like, don't be shy to just add things because this is just fun to create some depth. It's good texture. You know, this whole project, just great texture everywhere. And then let's just put some, maybe some of this. And then, oh, we could do some, some little dots. Clusters, that's what I like to call these little dot clusters around some places. It'd be like right here. This is where you can like really make it your own, you know? Yeah, just embellishing, like just whatever feels right. Like, and I, I, I mean, I loosely think about design principles. Like I got three groups of these little dot clusters that kind of makes it feel aesthetically balanced. But don't, don't think too hard about that. Just have fun. Um, maybe I just want to, yeah. It's feeling messy and nice. I like that. Um, I do want to show you on this one, I did some marks that I didn't like, and I just used a little bit of gesso and painted over it, and then I was like, yeah, I like that better. So gesso is not in the subscription box, but it's just a nice thing to have to add depth and, you know, paint over something if you don't like it. It's a mistake fixer. Yeah, it could, it's so useful for some Gesso things. is spelled funny if people are Googling it. So with oh, a G, right? Yes, G-E-S-S-O. I tr my wife paints, and I, when she was in college, was trying to get her a nice gift, and I could not, she always talked about gesso, and I could not <laughs> find gesso anywhere. It's because it's with a G. Yeah, and sometimes Google doesn't help you out like that. It's like, I don't know what you it's want. Like, do you Sorry, mean Jesse? <laughs> I'm like, no, gesso. Yeah, and some of my friends in school called me gesso, so, because I was covered in it, like, all the time. And my name's Jesse, so that makes sense. Okay, well, this is our finished page. And I think that you're gonna have fun with this project. Just keep it, keep it fun. Spark a start. I would love to know what your word that you've chosen is. And we have a Facebook group um, that we like to share things there. It's called Let's Make Art Journals. And you can share your pages there and show us what word you're using um, so that we can all be inspired by what you're doing. Thanks so much for being here with us, making this awesome journal page. And we'll see you next time. Bye.